Can you use major public cloud providers for free? You bet you can. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda or following to the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works, what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, B-list geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get started. Well, this video is probably a long time in coming because I've gotten a lot of requests uh, in the comments and email and out on the social media about talking about some of the free tiers that public cloud providers provide. And this is, you know, a real need because if you're just learning how to leverage a particular cloud brand and you want to gain some skills, you're going to want some hands-on experience. And typically the only economical way to get that is to use the free tier that most of these public cloud providers provide. So, I'm going to go through it and tell you who is offering the free tier, what the free tier means, and how to get access. Let's go. So why do major cloud providers that are worth billions of dollars uh, give away their cloud services for free? So major cloud providers offer free tiers to attract new users, foster loyalty, and build brand trust by lowering the barrier entry. Free tiers let developers, students, and startups experiment risk-free, encouraging adoption of the cloud services that they're offering. As users and businesses grow, they're likely to upgrade to paid plans generating long-term revenue for providers. Ultimately, free tiers are strategic investments, increasing market share, encouraging innovation, and helping the cloud platforms become integral to future projects for a particular person or a particular company. So let's go through the major five cloud providers and talk about the free tiers that they offer specifically. Also, first, you know, to the leader, Amazon Web Services. AWS is the most widely used public cloud platform offering free tiers that include 12 months of access to common services like 750 hours of EC2 micro instances and always free resources such as Lambda and S3 within usage limits. To avoid charges, stick to the designated free tier services and set up billing alerts on your account. And we're gonna go through this as we talk about each of the cloud providers. Setting up a free tier is gonna be easy. You just have to make sure you're not gonna get a big bill because you're leaving instances out there. You're automatically converted into a pay cut, paid customer. So provide some cautionary advice in terms of how to avoid getting charged. And of course, next on the list would be uh, uh, the second place player in the cloud provider market, it's going to be Microsoft Azure. Azure provides a free tier with 12 months of select products like virtual machines and databases, a $200 starting credit, and numerous always free services for new users. You can prevent charges by only using always free services after the initial credit and enabling cost management and spending caps. In other words, what's going to be common amongst these when we talk about free tiers is make sure you immediately set up you know, spending caps, and the spending cap could be a dollar, uh, to make sure you're not getting some sort of a large cloud bill. And I've had a few of my students, and I've seen some people experiment with cloud providers, don't necessarily understand how to manage the cost, and they, they get converted automatically into a paid plan, and suddenly at the end of the month, they get a $1,000 bill from the cloud providers, and they have to figure out how to pay it or negotiate with the cloud providers to get, the, get a credit on that service. So don't do that. With a little caution, a little bit of governance, a little bit of setting up some automatic alerts, things like that, you can avoid paying for any of this. So next on the list would be Google Cloud Platform or GCP. GCP gives new users $300 credits for the first 90 days, plus ongoing always free usage for services like F1 Micro, VM, and BigQuery within their quotas. Stay within these free limits and monitor your usage dashboard to ensure you're never charged. So what about Oracle Cloud? Well, they offer an always free tier providing long-term access to database VMs and other resources that do not expire. Avoid charges by provisioning only resources marked always free and checking your usage regularly. And if that seems like a common pattern, it's going to be a common pattern. And by the way, 
you have to take the steps to make sure you're not going to get billed build and by, you know, monitoring your cost and usage. So one of, you, one of the things you're going to find is that even though these tiers are mark free, that in many cases, they're kind of designed by marketing people to try to convert you into a paid customer. So you have to be very careful, watch for the automatic conversions, things like that, and keep within the limits of the free tier. So read the instructions, read the policies and follow them. So what about IBM Cloud? Well, IBM Cloud offers light, free tiers for many important services, including Watson AI and Cloud Foundry, with allocations that renew monthly. As long as you use only the light plans and don't upgrade, these services will not incur any charges. So again, be careful. So what are the good and bad things about using free tiers? Um, well, first would be low risk experimentation. So you can learn new technologies, prototypes, ideas, or test business concepts without initial financial commitments. And obviously for startups, that's going to be very important. We don't want to start sinking thousands of dollars into a cloud bill uh, if we don't intend to be a long-term customer. So it's, it, it's a try before you buy things. Also, industry standard infrastructure is provided as well. Free tiers let you work on the same professional grade tools and platforms that power major enterprises. So if you're using S3 and EC2 on AWS, you're using the same systems that many of these larger enterprises are using. So you're not given a baby version of the cloud, not cloud on training wheels, as people used to call it, but the actual technology so you can see what it can do and also what it can't do. Uh, easy onboarding for beginners would be another thing. So great for students, hobbyists, and startups without the burden of upfront costs. And I always tell this to my students, so you can go off and give this stuff a try. You gotta be careful. Uh, look at the policies in terms of how they're gonna offer the free tier and, and what you're going to be uh, using and the limits of usage, things like that. And as long as you keep within those, provides an amazing opportunity for you to use very powerful, powerful services and get major skills that can pay the bills and do so for free. So what about the downsides of using free tiers? Well, the first thing would be severe resource limitations. Free tiers offer minimum compute, storage, or bandwidth, which may not support larger apps or production workloads. So obviously you're not gonna be able to build huge scalable enterprise-based systems using free tiers. It's for building prototypes and, and getting used to and experience with, this, with the cloud service. Also risk of accidental charges. So unintentional use of non-free features or exceeding limits can still result in unwanted fees. And I hear these stories a lot. Well, people will you know, launch a free tier, you know, allocate a resource uh, like a compute instance or a storage instance, leave it running, not understanding that the policy is that anything is left running, you're gonna be paying for. And suddenly at the end of the month, they're getting a bill for thousands of dollars. And I hear these stories all the time. And that's because the policies and restrictions and limitations around these free tiers are confusing. And I think people don't understand uh, what their responsibilities are and they mess up and they end up paying more money than they thought they were gonna pay. Also the big one would be feature restrictions. Not all advanced or newest features are available in the free tiers, sometimes restricting what you can build or test. Obviously they're not gonna give you access to everything for a free tier you're typically gonna get the minimum viable services and kind of the core services. You're gonna get access to some storage and compute, maybe some databases, you know, things like that, but you're not gonna have the kings, keys to the kingdom. Uh, so there is some limitations in the resources, how you're able to leverage them and how you're able to uh, use them around the policies of the tier. So what about some final advice? Well, here are five tips to make sure you don't pay for cloud services. Stay within the free tier limits. Can't stress that enough. You have to understand what they are and just be cognizant of them. It doesn't, you don't necessarily have to be fearful of them. So feel free to use the resource. You just have to understand the policies around the utilization of the free tier and when the free tier ends and you're going to be billed. You know, set up billing alerts and budgets. So the first thing I do when I set up these free tier accounts, if I'm doing so for students and things like that, is I'll set up a, pol a, a spending alert of one cent. And so if they charge me at all, I'm gonna get an alert and know to stop the service. And so those things are handy to set up. Also monitor your usage. In other words, you can monitor your usage online directly within the cloud provider and do so as you use the system and make sure that you're not 
uh, using more services than you should be using and get out of the free tier limit into the areas where you have to pay. Also delete or decommissioned unused resources. This is a common story I hear. People will, you know, allocate a database, allocate a storage resource, you know, what have you, and they'll leave it up and running and they never decommission it or, or take it offline. And many of the cloud providers, even if you have a three tier account, if you're leaving those resources allocated for you, uh, you may not get an alert, but they're going to send you a bill at the end of the month. So, you know, don't be one of those stories that I hear out there where suddenly they thought they were getting something for free and now they owe the cloud providers thousands of dollars. Uh, use only always free and light services. So make sure that you're cognizant of the services you're leveraging and try to use the ones that are always going to be marked as free. And that goes without saying. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, you guys stay very, very safe. Later.